So if we take a look at the Zardra train, you can tell the front of it is very, very detailed. And I want, I want to try and keep all this detail. I can print the gray bit in like gray resin. And then when it, it obviously comes to me, it's, it's going to have like basically no layer lines because it's in resin rather than like a normal printer. And then I can just paint a little bit of the brown here and then the darker gray. But when it comes to the main like chassis itself, you can tell that this down here is like a purpley maroon color. Now I've already ordered some filament for that. And you can tell as well that behind this like panel, the seats are also, and I can tell, they look maybe a slightly bit off here, but in person they definitely look the same color. And I'm gonna print like the seat section with the base and this like raised section here, all in one color in PLA. And then I'm just gonna rely on the detailing of everything else. The little restraint bar as well, I'm going to print in, if uh, if the resin printer guy does, then hopefully just like a shiny black. I think we're just about ready to start printing. Just set up the printer and I've got the new filament on there. It looks brown on camera, but it's definitely got a bit of purple to it. We've got the base here, which obviously includes the seats and then the, the new little coupling that I made for the front car. Underneath we got the bit for the chain dog, the bit for the wheels, the screw holes. And then once my resin printed parts, which are these grey bits, the black bits and this piece comes, then it will look amazing. I may have to paint a little bit of black on the seats, but I think I won't have to do too much. So let's export this, drag it to the desktop, open it, add some supports and it's ready to print. I did a little brim there for some extra sticking force to the build plate so we don't get any peeling edges. And with an 80% infill with three perimeter walls, it comes out at a nice, almost even 50 grams, which makes 300 grams or probably close to 350 once we add the inserts for the brass threads, which will probably go up above about five, 600 with the wheel assemblies, and then maybe even like seven or 800 with the resin printed parts added. So yeah, this is probably gonna be quite a heavy train, but it hopefully should be the weight of this but the aerodynamics of this, because it's so much shorter, it doesn't hit the air as much, so it doesn't slow down as much. And in the Zardra train, the little dragon thing is kind of slanted like this, so hopefully it doesn't slow down as much as well, because this is basically a giant sail in the wind. So yeah, estimated weight of this with reduced aerodynamics, just like this, so it should perform better than the Colossus recreation did. Oh, here we go, it is done. Wow, looks pretty clean. I do have some like 3D printer speed ripples though alongside. Okay, now let's print a middle car and actually get a little bit of a train together. So I've just put the four screws and the little holder plate on top there. So now we have a fully rotating axle. It just uses a simple thread. Just a simple brass thread like that and that's how we get the axles to work. The first time I used this uh, design, this method, uh, it was actually on Shambhala, my recreation of uh, Shambhala at Porta Ventura. All that's left to do this now is put the screws on the bottom, transfer over the wheels, and then wait till my resin printed parts come so that I can add the extra detailing. And boom, there we go. I managed to get all six cars printed. However, I'm running short on these little ball joints, so I only have a four-car train that's actually working at the moment. I've ordered a couple Screaming Serpents that I found for cheap online, so hopefully I can reuse the ball joints off of them when they arrive. But let's take a look at the first test run with a four-car train. Ooh, that already looked like it had a lot more speed than my old car did. Yeah, when this has six on there, and I've got all the extra weight from the resin printed detail bits on the side and the lap bars, it's gonna be one fast, heavy train. So that's most of the old coaster taken apart. Like I said, I'm keeping this bottom section, and I think I'm gonna keep the station as well. And I think I'll build first the station, the little bit behind it, the turn, and the brake, and then also the turn into the lift, because this brake, uh, obviously needs to be a certain height so it can still roll through and go round and then this needs to roll out of the station and go up the lift hill and hopefully if I build all of that first I'll then be able to build the lift and drop oh let's go I got the resin printed parts these look super nice 
Look at these little tiny lap bars. Oh, they're so cute. Look how tiny the, the handles are. And there we go. We have one of them set up. Wow, that looks crazy. And yes, this is the front piece. And I designed it so that there was only just enough room for the bearings either side. So that almost went wrong. And I think it turned out to be like almost 60 grams. Like this is 69 and this is like 52 or three but without these resin pieces. So with the resin pieces and the paint, it's gonna be close to 60. So it's a very heavy train. We've got a fully finished front car for Zardra. Wow, it's just all been clear coated. Oh, look at the detail on that front piece. I love the lap bars. I love how they turned out. I can't wait to test run there. And then I've got all the middle cars here just drying up after their clear coat. Just for show here, I thought I'd put a couple of these uh, middle cars behind just to show you what the train's gonna look like. Wow, that looks really good. I can't imagine what this is gonna look like going around the track. That's it, the train is fully complete. Look how good this looks. Give you a close up there. Oh, I love the little lap bars. I've coated it all with just a standard clear coat. Really like how the, the horns have turned out. Looks really good. But that's it, the train is fully finished and it weighs just under 600 grams, which is almost as much as the Colossus one was. That was just over 600. But as you can tell, it's much, much more aerodynamic than the Colossus one. It's got much shorter seats, and the angle actually helps, like the lap bars, help the wind travel over better. And the front as well, the wind will travel around it much easier. So it's just as heavy and more aerodynamic, which means this train should be my fastest train yet. I really do mean it, this thing is heavy. Like, I might have to use magnetic brakes to stop this thing at the end of the ride. Also, I have finished, I think that's the final inversion into the brakes. But that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys me uh, making the train. If you want to see the rest of the build, make sure you're subscribed and you've got notifications turned on so you're ready for when that video goes live.